I've got a piece of Saunders 200 pound paper here. I'm not going to do a wetting, well, complete wetting wet as usual. I'm going to just wet parts of it and I'm going to use two colours. I've got two adjacent colours here ultramarine blue, whoops, can you see that? Ultramarine blue and, and light red. And, I'm do, and by just putting water over bits of the paper, the, the colour will run and then stop on the dry spots. And it makes for all sorts of interesting marks. A um, bit of water, a bit of landscape and a bit of distance. Right, I've got, I'm a bit crowded in here. I'll just move, move this back a bit because my feet keep kicking it. Just adjust the camera. Okay, I know my camera angle is, is not ideal and my head gets in the way sometimes. But, I, but um, my setup is a, a, a little tripod, which is very good. It's only fifteen pounds. It's superb. But I'd love something with a beam, so that I could I could position the camera above my head, looking down, so that you won't see so much of me. You might see my knees, but I haven't really solved that problem economically. So, so here we are. Um, ultramarine blue and light red. We'll see how far we can go with that. So I'll uh, put some water on here and there and we'll see, we'll make some marks and see see what happens. Not soaking yet, so a bit, bit of blue. And as you come low as you can, a bit of water in there. Get the dry brush in. All right, okay, let's uh, see what happens to that. Now I can go in with some light red now and make a bit of shadow, a bit of a... And a bit more red towards the horizon, methinks. In there. Right, the boards are about 30 degrees, which is quite quite nice. Right, okay, we'll, we'll let that go. So we've got quite an interesting looking sky there. Maybe I'll put a bit of bit of real good dark. So, we're, we're, so the sky is a bit more connected. And that dark bit in there, in the water. Okay. I'll reclip the paper. It is pretty uh, thick paper, so I'm getting out of the block. I ripped it, which is a shame really, but it'll be covered by by the mount or mat as you might say in America. Okay. Right. Uh, I'll give that a bit of a dry because I want to put a background in and I don't want that to, to bleed. Okay. I'm not I don't want it bone dry. I think I'll give my palette a little bit of a clean. I do have a, 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 a butcher's tray twice that size. Well, it's like a shop display, food display tray. I got these small ones from, I think it was the Emporium, the Doll's House Emporium, um, down in Devon somewhere in the UK. And they were quite cheap. You don't want to buy Low uh, packs of like catering packs of 20 or 30, you would just want a couple, and there's a great size to, to hold, it doesn't put any weight on your wrist. Great little palette. So, well, let's put in some background. Let's have a bit of, bit of light on there. A 
Right, I'm going to put some trees over over some of this. So I don't want to do too much overpainting of what's already there. Right, make sure you're going horizontal. I'm only guessing. I used to draw my horizons, but now I, I don't bother. So we'll put in a bit of harder colour. Right, just use a corner of the brush and just. Look at that one there. You can do so much with this quality paper. You, it's a bit much harder with the uh, with the um, Fabriano 130 pounds, which is ideal for what I use it for. But you need thick, rich paint if you're going to paint over wet paper. Otherwise, it'll just disappear. Oh, it's just not darks here. I might try and lift out some of this. Let's just get that up there a bit. Just break up that outline. Okay. Uh, and we'll just bring a bit of reflection down here. Just leaving a light, slight margin between the bank and the reflection just to give a better impression of water. Let's just put some broken water there. Just getting an approximate. You can use any colours for this. I used to use um, just burnt umber, sepia. Okay, so that's that. <coughs> now I'm going to put in some dry brush. I, I'm working from a, an earlier watercolour, but I'm not copying it. I've just, just a, it's just there. Right, uh, while that's drying there, I'm going to just put in this uh, foreground. Got some different colours in here, or well, different intensities, shall I say, tones. Some warmer colours. Darks in here. Put the uh, grass and grasses in. It's a little bit wet there at the moment, so we'll. Nice rich dark. You can work with, with the tube paint, that would be better for this, really. But I haven't got no, I don't want to clean the big palette because I've got a lot of me, me, me sort of whites on there. Let's put in some, some shrubby stuff here. I'll just a bit of rigor work on, on this in a minute. Put in some foliage up here with the, with the edge of the brush. I'm using Cotsman watercolours, they're the student quality. That's better. A bit of red in there, it's a watery colour. 
put some rigor work on there for some trunks and stuff. Okay, now we need to fill in there, in here, because this is in the depth of the of the scrubby tree. Just a bit more blue in that. A bit more stuff in. I'm going to dry this now because I don't want it to bleed too much into the surrounding wet paint. So you can say that this is a sort of tone study in two, two colours. I don't often use just the red and the blue, but a good combination would be ultramarine, light red and raw sienna. That would be a great, great mix. You can get a range of, of greens with it and some really good darks by mixing the three primaries. I'm wondering if I could have scratched out with my nail. I'm not sure if this paper if this paper does scratch very well. No, no, it does yeah. You get quite a thick line with with the rigger. Take a little bit of that. Oops. Right now, some some grassy stuff. Put a bit of the stuff in here. I, I, I would have, if this had been Fabriano, I would have scraped out some of the uh, some of the rocks and rocks and textured it that way. But I'm not really sure how this would would go on the 200 rough. It's a lovely, lovely paper. But thanks to David Dickens who sent me a. A box for the various quality watercolour papers, including Arches, Arche. Just to have some texture. If you're doing reflections, what goes up comes down. Then it just gives that impression of of a reflection. Okay, I'm going to lift out some of that for some yachts on there. And while we've got a little brush wheel, I'll just put a couple of a couple of birds in. Right, okay. Um, I'm going to lift out some of these from those trees on, on that line there just to give an impression of yachts, just to, uh, anything that adds a bit of detail. Oh, it does work. If 
you saw my uh, acrylic demonstration from Saturday, I uh, came back from lovely four days in Canterbury, beautiful city. We stayed in a, usually we go camping, but I can't put the trailer up anymore, it's getting too heavy for my wrists. A bit of arthritis now at my age. But we've had a good go at the camping, loved every minute of it. We live very well, hasten to add. We didn't sort of scrimp or scrape or anything. So I like cooking outside. Just take some of those out. Little, little uh, bits of wind ruff, ruffling. Okay. I'm going to put to some more last and Actually, I've just, just to give a, a bit of detail in an otherwise flat area. This is, is a nice an exercise in tone study. Oh, I need a bit more rigor work in there, I think. Right, okay, so I don't know if you like this or not, but I'll uh, put in some a signature. I think I always sign on the, the left because to sign here I'd have nothing nowhere to rest my hand. Alright, I'll put a, a mount around it. Now, because this is a 15 inches by 11, I, I used to put sort of a large mount on that, but you don't have to. So we'll, we'll, we'll try a series of, of mounts. Uh, a smaller one or a double mount here something. See what happens with this one. So we've got, we've got that. So we've got several different pictures. Well, I'll just bring the camera around. Just excuse the shake and just. All right, okay. Let's so just zoom into that. So that might be a better, a better format. But you'll notice that this is a an L-shaped composition. Rather than the golden section, so there's a another version. So uh, all very enjoyable. Now that there's the ivory ivory mount, slightly smaller than the large one. The thing is, you missed bits like that, but it doesn't matter. It's what it is. It's a, a quick tone study using two colours. And you can use these things as a, a, a preliminary practice run for more developed works. So have a go, and try and see what you come up with. I think the I used to use indigo, which was a very cold blue, and uh, sepia. Maybe I'll go back to that. I have done some on YouTube, but not for a while. Maybe that'll be my next one. I was going to do a meadow, but it sort of... Well, we all like water, don't we? And painting reflections. So thanks for watching, and I'll I'll see you later. Let's zoom out on that. Bye bye.